everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders, featuring the large die and the embossing folder, Club Kits of the Month for October. Now, the large die is called a stitch ornament and display, which is wonderful, and the embossing folder is called Scattered Christmas. Now, I'm going to start out with the ornament. This is one of those stitched items, which I am growing to love. And I'm just going to show a little bit of the stitching. I have plenty other videos, um, and there's so many more out there um, in our creator lineup that has shown stitching on our cardstock. Now, I am using a variegated thread, um, which means the colors will change. They'll go from light to dark, depending upon the colors that you have. And I'm just following a certain pattern when stitching. I'm using a little bit of tape on the back to stitch the end of the thread down, because we don't not in stitching. And I'm just moving along. Now, when I have to change my threads, where you end, you just want to make sure that you have on the end of the threaded needle when you restart that same color. So that color will just continue to blend seamlessly across your stitched piece. I'm using three strands of a six strand DMC flaw. So here I am, I'm restitching and I'm making sure that dark end is where I'm starting. So the colors will just flow seam uh, seamlessly. If I left the lighter color, I would have that break which still would not look bad at all. Um, but if you're curious on how to use your variegated threads, because they add a beautiful result as you're stitching, you don't have to change colors. You don't have to worry about having all of these different threads. Um, a variegated thread will give you that look instantaneously and a soft look. Um, when it comes to that. And you can just see the different areas are just this different shade using one strand of thread. So it kind of gives you just that different look as you're stitching. I am using a heavyweight cardstock. Uh, this is the Gina K Ivory um, heavyweight that I am stitching on. And you can see by using three threads, the holes are a nice size that they're not splitting, they're not expanding, um, or anything else like that. So here again, I'm going to start with another strand um, of thread, getting that threaded into my needle and making sure that same color is towards the end of my thread. So when I pull up, I have that. And you can see the beautiful variegation that you get with those colors. This ornament also has gold um, filigrees, uh, flourishes for the top and the bottom. So I'm going to adhere them um, onto, of course, the top and the bottom of the ornament. And I also uh, die cut just the solid uh, piece so I could have a backing to my ornament. Now, the one thing I did forget to do this, and what I wanted to do was to take that backing, the black cardstock of the ornament, and I wanted to run that through my embossing folder. I forgot. Yes, but it looks just fine if you keep it solid. But if you ran it through your embossing folder, you would have this beautiful look on the back, this textured look on the back of your ornament as well. I'm going to line these two up. I'm not going to push it down because again, with all those threads back there, it's going to give it some dimension. I am going to place an acrylic block on that so that it goes even, so that it stays even on top of the black cardstock. So here I am, I'm taking one of the pieces and I ran that through and it's a beautiful Christmas print. Now the die set, this is a stand to hold an ornament. Um, so I'm taking, they have these two side panels. So I die cut the black cut out 
and I'm going to adhere that onto the top of metallic gold mirror cardstock by Spellbinders. Now those curves on the end do come out, so they are, you can punch through them, and I'll show you how you can put them in this. I made them permanent. I've die cut my panels, and then there's this half, this cutout for the ovals, and you want to set that in the center. There's score lines on this piece that you can line this up in the center. And I die cut because you need four of those pieces that I'm currently working with now. And again, score lines so that you can crease those. I will take two of these and run them through my embossing folder as well. So as you can see, my um display my ornament display i did this in black cardstock to really let that ornament just pop right through the center i'm working the score lines to make sure that they are set and i'm not creasing them with my paper creaser i want to have a little bit of give with them you can see i was tapping my finger that means i'm i'm thinking and that's where i'm like okay i want to run these through my embossing folder so I'm going to place two of them in there. I'm not worried about positioning or anything else like that, but to just give them that texture. And it's okay that it went on the tabs that will be secured by glue. <clears throat> I do suggest when you're putting a piece together like this to use a strong adhesive. Now, I like the combination of double-sided tape and liquid adhesive. Um... I just did not do that here. I will do it for the other ones that come next. You can see here is you're taking two of those cutout pieces, the bases. This is the base and the top, and you're layering them on top of each other. So the way that it folds, it just folds on top of the neck of the one behind it, and then you have the same folds for the one in the back. So you're going to do that twice. You're going to have one section for your bottom, and you're going to have one section for your top. This is going to be just a little bit um, bigger than a five by seven piece. And what I mean by a little bit bigger is just because of the way that, that I create. So the base and the front measure five by seven. With the extras that I add, it makes it just a little bit bigger. I'm taking the piece that I embossed and I want that to the front and I'm going to set in place the bottom and the top part of the structure. And those, these are those layers that we have created. And you can see what that looks like. So you have that piece in the center. It's almost like a vignette that you're creating those layers there, which gives you so many more possibilities when you create this. This is a piece, this is, for me, this is not a piece to collapse. This is a stand. This is a home decor piece. And for those of you that know, I do love using our paper crafts that we have because it has grown so much to create home decor pieces. What a beautiful way to decorate your home, whether it's a holiday or not, with the art that you create. And I'm really getting into that. Here I'm creating my second pillar so that I can get this attached to that base. I do cut another piece of black cardstock for the back panel to give it some strength. I very highly suggest a heavyweight cardstock for this construction or double up your cardstock. You want to make sure that this is going to be sturdy. Okay, so I used here, uh, this is an 80 pound or no, a 100 pound cardstock. So I opted to create that back panel, which is what I'm creating here now. By all means, run it through your embossing folder again so you'll have that texture on the back. For me, it was the back of the piece. 
really wasn't going to be seen. So I opted to not run it through the with the um, through with the embossing folder. I am using my two inch film tape by Uline. It's a very strong tape and I'm going to just set this down on this. I know I'm going to have a quick grab and it's not going to go anywhere, but that back is just going to have that stability. And that's where I wanted it. Now you can see I'm taking these side braces and they just slide right in. They are tabs. Um, so you can pull them in and out. I opted to make them permanent. I'm going to add a little bit of glue to those two sections there. And then I'm going to come in with my tweezers that will become my third and fourth hands to hold them in place so that they're, they're going to get adhered directly. You may choose to not make them permanent and that's okay. So you could create like an ivory base, don't use an embossing folder and make it interchangeable if, if you want to do that with these arms. But I just chose to make them permanent. I think it just gives the piece uh, more stability because I have two of those thick pieces of cardstock. They're the braces, um, at least in my mind, they're the braces. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, allowing those tweezers to hold that in place. And you can see I have that tweezer resting on that brace and it's not sagging. So it's a good structure piece. Back to the ornament, I've placed the gold topper for the ornament, and this die also comes with some greenery, holly, berries, pines, and poinsettias. So I dug into my scraps, pulled out some different colored reds for the poinsettias. I always die cut more than what I think I'm going to need. I love to collage and just build up these floral sections and I'm going to do one on the bottom left hand corner and the top right hand corner. I think by using the black cardstock it's just making these florals pop right off those corners and adding so much to this. I love the look of a black gold and red and ivory for the holidays. Um, but by all means, make your base ivory. You can make it any color that you would choose. Here I'm just tucking all of these greeneries in. I'm putting the pines first underneath the poinsettia and then coming in with the hollies. I will come in with the branches as well. There's also a branch die and I'll be using the red die cut berries to attach to them. Now I'm going to work on the other side, again, just filling this in and just pulling in these sprigs. And again, to stretch this die out, uh, you could add some of these greeneries to the bottom and have them pop up from that center piece. You don't want to have them pop up too much though, but you could tuck them in behind that first panel as well because um, your ornament is actually going to hang in here. Now, I made mine so that I could interchange the ornament. If I want to change its color, um, if I want to change the stitching and create multiple ornaments. So you could like make one for each year and, um, and, and change them out. And you'll see how I attach the ornament in there in a moment. Here I am, I'm adding those berries to the branches to help make them stand out. Again, it's black cardstock, so they kind of, even though they're on top of the green, they can get lost there, but by adding those berries, they just pop. I've grabbed some of my twine and I've doubled it up. You could use, they actually have a die for the string if you want that in there as well. And if you die cut both of them, you could actually have it be a pendulum over that center bar that's on the top as well, if you wanted to. 
here I'm going to add my gems. So I grabbed some gold gems and I'm just going to accent in the center where the stitching is. And then I will add some drops to the openings in the gold filigree that's around the ornament as well, just to have some fun with that. You can continue on with either sequins or more gems if you wanted to. Once that was dry, I'm gonna set my ornament in place and thread my twine behind and above the center strip. So remember, we double layered the top and bottom part of the structure. I'm actually tying my ornament onto that middle and you can see that hanging there. So that if you're giving this as a gift to somebody, they will be able to take that ornament out and put it on their tree, which means you should make two <laughs> so that they could still have this as a stand or they'll probably want one every year. Here I have it sitting on my desk and you can see it just blows and it just slightly wiggles in there, which makes it look beautiful. But I think this is a wonderful, wonderful piece of home decor. I hope I gave you just a different way. I'm sure there's another way to put this together and I'm sure Spellbinders will have that video as well. But I hope I gave you another way to look at this die and how it can be interchangeable and used all year round and a beautiful gift to your recipient for the holidays. As always, the kits that I used for this month from Spellbinders will be linked down below in the video description, along with a link to their gallery so you can get even more beautiful, beautiful inspiration to their shop and all of the other club kits that are available. They just keep expanding. It is wonderful. Any questions you may have, leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up so that you can be, and also the notification so you can be notified when the next video is live. Thank you so much for taking the time, for stopping by and spending this little lengthy time with me. Um, but I hope I gave you some ideas to create your art. Enjoy the art that you are creating and know that is what you are creating. But most of all, always remember what's most important. Always be creative, guys, and I will talk to you in the next one. Take care.